Gargoyles Quest is the first in a series of spin-off games from the Ghosts and Goblins franchise, and is one of the most unique experiences on the Game Boy. Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins franchise was popular both in the arcades and on home systems. The games were well known for having a downright sadistic difficulty level, and this was epitomized by the Red Gargoyles, known as Red Aremers in Japan. These iconic enemies relentlessly chased players and moved unpredictably, so when developer Capcom decided to bring the series to the Game Boy, they imagined a game where players could take control of this powerful enemy. Unlike Ghosts and Goblins, Gargoyle's Quest is not a linear action game. Instead, it's part action, part RPG, a bit like Zelda II The Adventure of Link. The hero, Firebrand, can fly, but his ability is limited. As you progress through the game, you'll be able to upgrade your flight and jumping abilities, increase your maximum health, and gain new weapons that you can select from the pause menu. It has nothing to do with the Gargoyles cartoon that was released four years later by Disney. As you explore the Ghoul Realm, you'll randomly encounter enemies which you'll have to fight in an action scene. The Ghosts and Goblins series is well known for its difficulty, so don't expect an easy time here, but the upgrades you find will certainly help. The game was produced by the great Tokoru Fujiwara, the designer of the original Ghosts and Goblins, and the producer of so many great Capcom games from the 80s and 90s, including DuckTales, Willow, and Mega Man 2. The game's lead designer was Kenshi Naruse, who would go on to work on Hook and Skyblazer, two games that feature similar flight mechanics. The music was composed by Harumi Fujita and Yoko Shimomura. Fujita worked on many other popular Capcom games, including Strider, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, and Mega Man 3. She had also collaborated previously with Shimomura on the soundtrack for Final Fight. Yoko Shimomura would go on to compose most of the music for Street Fighter II The World Warrior, and would later join RPG Giant Square, where she worked on Super Mario RPG, Breath of Fire, and Kingdom Hearts. Gargoyle's Quest was a hit for Capcom when it released in the summer of 1990. The Game Boy was very popular, and players were hungry for unique games that were more than just watered-down versions of their console counterparts. Despite this box art that depicts the main character as green instead of red, players were still happy to play an exciting new adventure on the Game Boy. This was just the beginning for Firebrand, and Gargoyle's Quest got two sequels. Gargoyle's Quest 2 on the NES, and Demon's Crest for the Super Nintendo. These games are both quite good. In modern times, the original Gargoyle's Quest still holds up as one of the best original Game Boy games. When Polygon released their list of the top 30 Game Boy games of all time, they ranked Gargoyle's Quest at number 17. If you'd like to play Gargoyle's Quest on a modern platform, it is one of the games included with the Switch's online service. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges retro games are notorious for. This game starts off challenging and does not get much easier. There are passwords to save your progress, but they are few and far between. Make one too many mistakes, and it'll be game over. But what if I told you where to find every hidden item and upgrade? 
What if I showed you the best path through every confusing maze? And what if I showed you easy ways to defeat every boss? Even Brieger himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. And please join our Patreon for access to an exclusive Discord community and a chance to vote on future episodes. This episode was suggested and voted on by members of our Patreon community. Let's get started. All right, Gargoyle's Quest. You can press the start button to skip past this story, but if you take the time to read it, it tells the tale of an army of destroyers that almost wiped out the entire ghoul realm several hundred years in the past. Just when everyone had given up hope, a great fire swept over the realm. A red blaze, if you will. And it wiped out the entire destroyer army. Well, almost. Because now the realm is threatened once again. Before we get started, there are passwords in this game, and there's one that's very easy to remember. Just enter all Fs. This will bring you to the first town with Jump Level 2, Wings Level 2, Life Level 3, 6 Lives, and 22 Vials, which is almost enough to buy 3 extra lives. You'll just need to find 2 more vials somewhere. You'll also start out with some useful weapons and items, so if you're struggling with the beginning of the game, give that F password a shot. But we are going to start from the beginning, and here, it seems that an unknown army attacked and the king has been Gua. I'm not exactly sure what Gua is, but it's gotta be bad because that guy immediately dies after he tells us about it. It seems that Firebrand is in another dimension, and I'm not sure which dimension he's in right now. For all we know, it may be just this room, but we can see right now that our powers are pretty weak, jump and wings level 1 and only 2 points of health, and when we head through this door, we can make our way to the dimensional portal. The guy said dimension portal, but it's more like Halloween Town from the Nightmare Before Christmas. In any case, this is our first action scene. Press the A button to jump, and while you're in midair, press the A button again to hover. Your wing energy will rapidly decrease, and you'll see that meter in the lower right, but if you land or cling to a wall, you'll immediately replenish it. Drop down here to the left and make your way across to the right. You can drop into that water, it will not damage you, and in this game, you can kill enemies, but they will respawn if you go too far backwards, so keep that in mind. These items that we're collecting are vials, and we'll be able to use those vials to buy extra lives when we get to the first town. Try not to touch the spikes, and you'll need to use two attacks to take out that fireball. If you grab this heart, make sure that you're ready to hold right to pull back to the side after you get it so you don't fall into the spikes below. Take out this fire, climb to the top, and take out this bat enemy before moving forward. Then drop down here on the left, wait for that ghoul to move out of the way, and attack him with your breath weapon. Go all the way down to the bottom, then walk back up to a little bit past the middle to take out that bat and then drop between these two bone snapper fish and remove them. Take out another bone snapper, avoid the spikes but the water is safe, and climb up this wall ninja Gaiden style, 
and then get up to the top of this tree where you'll have to use two projectiles to clear that fire enemy, and then we can fly over to grab a vial, but make sure to hold right to get back. You want to make this bat move and avoid him, and then drop down here where we'll take out another fish and another ghoul. Drop down quickly and take out another ghoul, and take out this bat before you try to fly across here. While you're hovering in the air, you can press the jump button again to cancel your flight, but you will not recharge your wing energy until you touch the ground or grab the wall somewhere. And we've made it to our first boss. As soon as we touch this wall, the Zundo Drewer will appear. He always appears on the right side, so that's a good opportunity to hit him a couple times. If you're down to your last point of health, you'll need to be very conservative against this guy, and this fight will not be easy. Try to stay as far away from the boss as you can, attack him when you have an opportunity to do so, and if you see it moving downwards, that's a good time to try to get behind the boss, and you'll be able to score a lot of hits from close range. So if you see the boss moving downwards, try to get behind it, that's your best chance to deal a lot of damage against this guy, and you do want to watch out for the fires that it spits at you. It could appear pretty much anywhere in the area here, so don't be surprised if it appears on the far right, and finally we were able to get behind the boss and quickly take it out. If you have a full health bar, there's a much easier way to beat this guy. As soon as you get into the room, you want to drop down to this position, and once the boss appears, you want to hold right and mash the attack button. It's important that you hold right when you're attacking, so that when you get hit, you immediately start clinging to the wall again. With the Zundo Drewer defeated, make your way to the open door, and we'll finally emerge in the Ghoul Realm. So was that door the Dimension Portal? I'm still not sure. What I am sure of is that there are random monster encounters in this area, and some of them are very easy, but others, like this one, are quite difficult. These ghouls that have shields can only be hit from behind, like the Dark Nuts in Legend of Zelda. The game does not care that we're at very low levels right now. You might have to face any type of random encounter in this very first zone. If you do die and run out of lives, you'll come back at that building that we came out of when we exited through the dimension portal, so you don't have to do that first level again. Take the lower path here and talk to this ghoul. We will have to fight him, but if you take the upper path, you'll have to fight two of them. Alright, this is an easy battle. These guys don't have shields, and we can just quickly drop down here, engage our wings, and take out the last two. So that fight is pretty simple. We're trying to make our way to the first town, so continue to head along here and another random encounter. Alright, this is an easy one. Same as the monsters we just fought a moment ago. If you want to just drop down on those last enemies, we can afford to take a hit because we'll be completely healed the next time we have to fight something. So as long as you don't completely die, you're okay. And another random encounter, now this one is way more dangerous. The projectiles that this lizard monster shoots at you deal two points of damage so it may be worth your while to take one point of damage from the spikes so that you'll be safe. If you get hit by that thing's projectile, it will instantly kill Firebrand. We survived that one, but we've had some bad random encounters. Still, we persevered and made it to Jark's Village. It's difficult to kill undead monsters, so many of the ghouls that were killed by the Destroyer's army have revived here in the towns and villages. The first ghoul that we talked to tells us about an item called the Essence of the Soul Stream, and if you die in a random monster encounter, it will say that you were revived by the Essence of the Soul Stream, but that's not what this guy was talking about. He's talking about an item that we'll find later, and it's a very useful one. If you enter this small house, you'll find the throne room of the Baron Jark. 
Check down here in the lower left to get an extra vial, and then talk to Jark. Jark's not a bad guy, but he is a liar. At first he says that he can't help us without his gremlin stick, but whenever we agree to help him find it, suddenly he's like, oh well I do have this fingernail of the specter that you absolutely need, and he'll give us that, which will increase our jumping ability. I'm not exactly sure how a fingernail makes you jump higher, but in any case, you won't be able to get past the next bridge without it, so make sure that you get the fingernail of the specter from Jark before you leave this town. Outside, we can talk to a few more of the local monsters, and down here, if you check, we'll be able to pick up two more vials. What are we going to do with all of these vials, you may ask? Well, we can cash them in to buy extra lives, and we'll be able to do that in this house right here. While it may take Super Mario a hundred coins to buy an extra life, it only requires eight vials to buy one talisman of the cyclone here. I mean, more than that would just be greedy. Shots fired, Mario. If we check our inventory, it looks like we can afford to purchase another Talisman of the Cyclone, and you can have up to nine extra lives at one time. After that, you will not be permitted to buy any more. Extra lives are the only thing that you'll be able to purchase using your vials, so you should buy as many as you can whenever you have the opportunity to do so. Later on in the game, you'll have to spend more vials per extra life. Before we leave town, we should stop over in this house to get our password. They call it the Resurrection Spell, and even if you don't write down your password, if you die, you'll be respawned here instead of back at the Dimension Portal, so you should definitely talk to this guy, even if you don't intend to use the password. Once you're finished in town, you can exit from any of the sides, and we're going to head north to the Spectre's Bridge. You can talk to this ghoul on the left if you want. At first he begs us for help, but he doesn't say how we can help him, and once he realizes we're not one of the bad guys, he tells us that the attackers went east. Weird dude. Alright, lizard monsters again. Remember, you do not want to get hit by their projectile attack because it will deal enough damage to kill Firebrand and will lose a life. Also, make sure to wait for all the projectiles to go off of the screen because the battle does not end until they're all cleared. And here's the Spectre's Bridge. If you don't have the fingernail on the Spectre, it's going to be a short trip. You need it to be able to make that first jump. You do not want to touch the lava here. That will deal you two points of damage and that's enough to kill Firebrand. Make sure to take big jumps so that you get over these plumes of fire that look like they're straight out of Mega Man 1. And do a big jump to get across the spikes at the very end. That's all there is to it. On the other side of the bridge we find a new part of the map. There's still random encounters here so be ready for that. This is an easy one. What is it that Firebrand actually spits out of his mouth? Is it some kind of ninja star? Does his body, like, produce ninja stars? Because that's kind of terrifying when you think about it. Down here, it looks like a vial, but this is a talisman of the cyclone, which is an extra life, so make sure to pick that up as you make your way down and to the right. Alright, we've definitely seen these guys before, so we know what to do. Watch out for the projectiles, clear the one on the left, take a quick damage, and very quickly wipe out the one on the right, making sure to avoid all projectiles until they completely clear the screen. And then we'll be moving on. We are trying to get to that large tower. It's a living tower, and that's where we're going to find the gremlin stick. The Living Tower is a large area and is one of our first great challenges. Take out these ghouls at the beginning and we're going to encounter some new enemies here, including these broccoli monsters that don't move, but whenever you shoot them, they explode and they shoot projectiles in three directions. 
you want to either avoid those or try to shoot them from far away. Try to take out these two insects before you take out the broccoli, and you want to head over here to the left, avoid the path on the right for now. We want to take out this first insect before we move up, so keep jumping until it comes down the screen. Sometimes you'll be able to despawn it, then take out that broccoli, wait on the left wall until the projectiles get out of the way, and we're going to land right next to the broccoli on the left, and take out the broccoli on the right. Jump up here and shoot the insect, fly over to the left wall, and then back to the right. We'll be able to quickly grab a vial up here, and then hover over some spikes. Here's another tricky area. You want to get on top of this moving platform, and if you'd like to get an extra life, jump down to the right, but make sure that you're ready to flap your wings after you collect that one up, so that you can float over to the left. You can make those eyes move and then just climb back to the top and they'll explode and you won't have to do anything about them at all. Make your way back the same way that we came before. There's no way to jump up and grab that one up. You have to drop down from above to get it. Continue across. We're going to hover up here, land next to the broccoli, and take out the broccoli on the right side. Then we want to get rid of one more insect and we'll be right back where we were before. We're going to try to jump up on top of the moving platform here, and then we want to get to the right side of the other moving platform. So hover over here, do not jump up near the spikes, you'll take some damage, and then we'll be able to float over here and grab that vial, but make sure to hold back to the left so that you don't fall down below. It may not even be worth it to grab that vial, Sometimes you fall down to the bottom and you have to backtrack all the way back up. This is a checkpoint, so if you die and you don't run out of lives, you'll come back here. And you want to shoot this plant monster and then cling to the wall to the right of it, just in case it shoots an eyeball at you. Do the same thing here, shoot it and then cling to the wall. Let that eye go right over Firebrand's head. And then head up here to the top and land on this platform. We're going to jump to the left, cling onto this platform, and then jump back to the right. Something that you need to be aware of is that whenever you jump off of a wall, you always jump up a little bit. So if there are spikes directly above Firebrand, you're going to take damage. So remember that when you're on these moving platforms, and also when you collect the vials right there. You don't want to cling to the wall after you grab those vials, you'll almost definitely hit the spikes right above you after you get off the wall. And that brings us to the boss, the four eyes. We're going to take out the eye in the lower left first. Fly right up next to it and shoot it five times. If you're fast enough, it won't be able to shoot back. Then we're going to take out this one in the lower right. With the eye off screen, jump and shoot to the right, and when the projectile gets close to the right edge, Advance the screen to the right so that the eye gets hit. Do that five times. For the last two eyes, you want to get on this moving platform in the middle, wait for the eye to shoot at you, jump up above its projectile, hover and shoot at the eye several times. The one on the right is a little bit easier than the one on the left because there's a place that you can land that doesn't have spikes on it. So take advantage of that, Carefully finish off the final eye, and once all of the eyes are defeated, you don't immediately win. You need to exit on the left side. So don't get too excited to mess this up. You don't get credit for beating this level until you go through this opening that appeared on the left side. For completing the living tower, we get the gremlin stick that we were looking for, but that's not all. We also get the power of the Blockbuster, which is a much better new weapon that we can select from the pause menu, and it will allow Firebrand to spit boomerangs instead of the ninja stars that he was spitting before. Up here we can talk to this ghoul who says that we're going to die, but he's mistaken because it is actually he that is going to die. A very easy battle. If you want to switch over to your blockbuster, you can, but I mean, that guy's just way too easy. 
We need to make our way back to Jark's village so that we can use the gremlin stick on him, and to get back there, we'll need to cut through the Spectre's bridge. If you die at this point in the game and run out of lives, you'll return to the tower. So you don't have to play through the tower again, and it actually could be a convenient place to respawn after you talk to Jark. So keep that in mind if you're down to your last life. Maybe you would want to die after getting the power from Jark, and you'll respawn back near the tower. We already have five extra lives at this point in the game, so we're not going to take advantage of that shortcut. Instead, we're going to head over to the store where we have enough vials to purchase two more extra lives, bringing our total up to seven. Not bad. If we had one more vial, we could purchase three more extra lives, but I guess more than that would be greedy, so we'll just buy the two and make our way over to Jark's throne room, where we can say hello to him once again. You can talk to Jark here, and he'll be very excited that we brought him the gremlin stick, but until you use the gremlin stick, and you don't have to select it from a menu or anything, just choose the use command and it will automatically be used. That's what you need to do to get the candle of the poltergeist. So if you just talk to Jark, that is not good enough. Make sure to use so that you get the candle of the poltergeist. We'll need to have the candle of the poltergeist to revive the king of the ghouls. And there's a character up ahead that won't let us pass unless we have it. So we're going to cut through the Spectre's Bridge once more. This is a very easy area, and we should be pretty good at it by now. Remember to take large jumps so that you get up above the Pillars of Fire, and do not touch the lava. That is instant death, at least at this point in the game. And once you've made it to the end, we'll be back over here on the other side of the map, and we're going to head up north. It looks like it's more of those ghouls with the shields, but there's only two of them this time, so it's a bit easier. Jump up on the left and hover above the ghouls until they pass below your feet, then drop down behind them to take them out. We'll get one vial for our trouble, and up here, when we talk to this ghoul, if we have the candle of the poltergeist, he'll ask us if we're going to find the king, and when you say yes, not only will he move out of the way so that we can get into the cave, but he'll give you the Armor of the Dragon, which will give us an additional hit point. Nice! There are a ton of enemies and traps in this game that deal two damage when they hit Firebrand, so having a third hit point is extremely valuable because it makes those things not instant death anymore. Once you have the armor of the dragon, make your way into the cave. The cave is a very easy transitional zone, sort of like one of those bridges. And let's try out that blockbuster. We're going to jump into the water here, and you'll slowly sink down. You can jump to make sure that you don't fall off the bottom. Watch out for the bone snapper fish, and make your way through the exit on the right side. On the other side of the cave, make sure to use your check command down here to pick up another extra life. With another talisman of the cyclone in your possession, make your way to the second town. There's nothing mandatory to find here in the second town, so if you're in a big hurry, you can simply leave and move on. But we'll hang out for a while and speak with the villagers. The way the text slowly appears in this game makes it seem like all of the ghouls are doing their best William Shatner impression. The blockbuster can't break even the hardest stone. It's really silly when you read it that way. This guy has another clue about the essence of the soul stream, and if we head down here to the lower left, this creature tells us that some ghouls have changed sides. Great because it was hard enough telling which were the evil characters and which were the eviler characters. Well, in any case, 
We have eight vials, and this guy will allow us to exchange them for a Talisman of the Cyclone, which will bring our total up to nine, the maximum that we can have. More than that would just be greedy, and up here we'll be able to get our password, sorry, the Resurrection Spell. Even if you're not going to write down the password, it is a good idea to talk to this guy. Just in case you run out of lives, you'll respawn back here. And that's all there is to see here in the second town, so we're going to head out. And this part is optional, but if you want to talk to this ghoul, he's interested in testing our strength, which I guess means that he wants to die. So we'll take him up on his offer. It's the lizard monster again, but now that we have three points of health, we can sustain one hit from the projectiles and not die. Still, you need to be careful about this guy, and make sure all the projectiles have cleared the screen before you get comfortable. Up here, use your check command right in front of this suspicious looking tree. Here you'll find the wings of the falcon, which increase your wing power, and that will allow you to fly longer. And it looks like we'll get to use those wings immediately because we've hit a random encounter. And this guy is dangerous. You cannot hit him from the front. He has a shield in the front. So you need to get behind him and he'll try to trick you and quickly turn around sometimes. So watch for that. Stay on the upper platforms, wait for an opening, get behind these guys and attack them with your blockbuster. Now that we've survived that ordeal, you may be wondering, how would we have known to search in that area to find the Wings of the Falcon? And the answer is, we'd get clues about it in the next town, but you don't need to get the clues to actually find the wings. Take on these man-eating plants, watch out for the eyeballs that they shoot at you, you can cling to the wall right next to the plant to avoid the eyes, and attack them with your blockbuster. Continue to make your way to the left, then head up, and you can see the next town in the distance, but first it looks like we need to fight the lizard monsters again. They should be no problem now that we have three bars of health and the blockbuster. We only get one vial for that, which is pretty weak, but we'll head up into the third town. It looks like there's a lot going on in this town, but the truth is, the real point of the third town is to give you some clues to help you find the Wings of the Falcon, and we already have the Wings of the Falcon, so you can mostly skip this one. There's not even a vendor who will sell you extra lives if you need them. You can get your password in the house in the upper right though. This guy tells you that you may need the Wings of the Falcon to cross the next bridge, and most of the characters here say the exact same thing. They say if you're loafing around, they'll eat you. So I'm not going to talk to everyone, I'm just going to talk to the characters that have unique things to say, and this is the most important one right here. This guy tells you that there were some wings under the huge tree behind the palace. Maybe they're the wings of the falcon, you think? This guy wants to know if the army that's attacking now is the someone. But don't give them too hard of a time. For most of these monsters, English is not their first language. He's just doing his best. This guy in the upper left corner just says a bunch of stuff that other people say, all kind of crammed together. Yeah, I think he just likes hearing the sound of his voice. And up here is where we can get the resurrection spell. So if you need your password, feel free to write this one down. And by talking to this guy, we'll sort of create a save point here. So if you run out of lives, this is where you'll respawn. And then we're going to head on out of town. Nothing more to see here. Now we already have the wings of the falcon. But there's another useful item that we can find in this region. The Essence of the Soul Stream. If you have to fight this guy, be careful. He is dangerous. He'll try to home in on your position, so stay as far away from him as you can and pelt him with your blockbuster. If you take one hit, you'll survive, but if you take two, you'll lose a life. 
And up here's the item that we were looking for. Check on this vial and you'll find the essence of the soul stream, which is one of the most useful items in the game. It's technically optional, but it is super good. And we'll see if we can use it here. If you take damage, you can pause, and this is the essence of the soul stream. Use it and it will refill your health. You can do this once in every action scene, and if you lose a life, it will be refreshed. So you should try to never die with the essence of the soul stream still in your inventory. If you talk to this guy and you have the wings of the falcon, he'll want to fight you. If you don't have the wings, he'll say, yeah, go ahead and try to get across this bridge without it, sucker, and just let you pass. It is possible to get across the next bridge without the wings of the falcon, but that's very difficult and I don't recommend trying it considering that finding the wings is so easy. So just defeat the enemies there, use your essence of the soul stream if you need it, and make your way to the bridge. This first jump at the Falcon's Bridge can be tricky even with the wings of the Falcon. I recommend holding to the right after you jump and tapping the jump button over and over again to turn your wings on and off. It's not completely necessary that you do that, but it does make it a little bit safer. And once you've done that first jump, the rest of it is quite simple. Just don't fall into the lava, although you can sustain one hit from it now and make your way to the right. And from here, we just need to make our way to the palace. There are more random encounters here, so watch out for those, and try to conserve your lives. The palace can be difficult. This is an easy random encounter. You just need to take out one ghost down here in the bottom. And we got two vials for that, which seems like a pretty good bargain. And we did it. This is Dark Cohen's palace. This demon says, don't tell me you've changed sides, but which side are you on, demon? It's really hard to tell. This guy tells us that Dark Owen is here in his own palace, so that's good to know. And this critter tells us that the King of Destruction's army has been called from their graves, meaning that they're also undead. So why are we fighting these guys? Shouldn't we be teaming up with other undead armies? Doesn't that make more sense? Well, in any case, when you exit up here, we're going to have to go through another challenging action scene. You can see some brightly colored bricks right in front of Firebrand there. Those are the trigger for a trap, and as soon as you touch them, the trap will be sprung and a plume of fire will pop up. So, it's very easy to see those bricks when you're playing here on the Game Boy Player or on a Game Boy Advance, but if you were playing this on an original Game Boy or any other monochromatic option, it would be much harder to see because those bricks would be the exact same color as any other bricks in the background. So if you're playing this on original hardware, you'll just have to memorize where the traps are. If we climb up here and then fly over to the left, we can climb this wall where we'll find some more vials. These big chubby vials are worth four, and we're going to need to find vials in larger quantities moving forward because in the later towns, they'll charge us more for extra lives. Make your way over here to the right, avoid the trap bricks so that you don't get hit, and continue over this way. Down here at the bottom, we're going to be able to find a heart. We have full health right now, so this is completely optional, but if you've been damaged and you'd like to come down here and pick up a heart, it may be a good idea. Watch out for those trap bricks, you don't want to release that bowling ball up on top. And we took a damage from those spikes, but that's okay because we're about to find the heart up here, but it would be a problem if we were coming to this just to refill our health. And here is that heart. So make sure to spring that trap below and wait for the bowling ball to pass, and then you'll be able to easily collect the heart at the top. Clear all of those blocks before moving under the spikes so that you don't accidentally jump into them. And then clear a few more blocks with your blockbuster and climb up to the right. 
Just like before we got the heart, you want to spring that trap and let the bowling ball sail over your head before moving forward. And up here you can see that there's wind that is blowing you back to the left. So you need to take that into account whenever you jump to the right. You're going to need more wing power than you might think you did. Walk all the way down here to the bottom and try to get this enemy to spawn. This guy is particularly annoying. You want to make sure that you take him out over here on the right so that he doesn't respawn. Then fly over those spikes and do a big jump to get up and over those blockbuster bricks. You don't want to deal with that bowling ball. Over here, if you jump high enough, you can cling to this wall and then you'll be able to collect that vial. And then we're going to work our way across to the right, where we're going to encounter a set of blockbuster bricks that you can't cling to, so you want to break through the lower set, and then you want to fly over to the right and jump up on top of them so that you can fly back to the left and get these vials. The blockbuster bricks will respawn, so if you mess it up, they'll come back if you fly far enough off the screen. We did take a damage doing that, but right underneath here we can find a hidden heart. Try not to take a damage from the spikes when you collect it, and quickly jump up here and head over to the right, because it's about time to fight another boss. Make sure to climb all the way to the top, drop down onto this platform, turn to the left, and rapidly attack Belzimos as soon as he spawns. If you're in the right position, you'll easily be able to finish off this boss, and the door will open to Dark Cohen's throne room. When we get to the throne room, the king is not in good shape. Over on the right side, we can pick up some vials, and over on the left, we'll be able to find a talisman of the cyclone, good for an extra life. Nice! Whenever we talk to the king, he's doing his best Waluigi impression, but he's not doing it very well. It's supposed to be wa, not wa. In any case, choose the use command, and you'll automatically select the candle of the poltergeist, which will wake Dark Cohen from his slumber. It seems that someone named Brieger has stolen the king's power, and this Brieger can only be defeated by the Red Blaze. I'll give you three guesses as to who that might be. Agree to help the king and he'll give us his last remaining power, which will increase the strength of Firebrand's wings and nails. This will allow us to jump higher and fly farther. Awesome. If you talk to the king after you get powered up, He'll tell us the next thing that we need to do. It seems that there's a woman named Majorita who might know this mysterious Red Blaze character, whoever that might be. And if we want to find her, we need to locate another guy named Byman. So we're going to try to find Byman next, but we won't find him here in the fourth town. Although we will get some clues about Byman's location, all we'll really find here in the fourth town are talismans and passwords. If you're paying attention, you'll learn that Byman is in another town, and we need to find an item called the Candle of Darkness, something that Byman may be able to help us with. If you head down here, we'll be able to purchase some talismans, but this time they cost 16 vials, twice as much as they cost before. At the moment, we already have 9 lives, so we won't be able to purchase more, even if we try. We can say yes, but he says we can't carry any more talismans. Still, you won't find them for a lower price in this part of the world, so you may want to buy some talismans, even at the inflated cost. In this room, we'll see the same password chamber that we've seen so many times before. We'll get the resurrection spell, and we'll create a save point here so that if we have to continue after losing our lives, this is where we'll respawn. And from here, we can leave the fourth town. There's nothing else to find here. And we'll be back out in the world, where we'll head down to this village, which is Byman's village. This ghoul tells us that we are as red as fire, 
in case we were a little bit confused from the box art. And this guy will sell us extra lives for 32 vials each. They were only 16 just one town over, and I kind of recommend that if you need to buy extra lives, you go back to the fourth town and buy them there. This friendly ghoul tells us that the Candle of Darkness has been stolen, and that's just our luck. It's probably off hidden in some action zone. In here, we'll be able to get our resurrection spell, although we just got one a few minutes ago. If you want your password again, talk to this guy. And then we'll move on from this room. The main attraction in this town is Byman's Throne Room, and it's not mandatory that we go there right now. However, if we talk to the ghoul that's guarding the door, we'll have to fight him, and for our trouble, we'll be able to get the Armor of Guile. Apparently, we look like a hero, and I'm not sure if that's a compliment coming from a monster. In any case, we have to fight this small gargoyle, and he will go down very quickly to your blockbuster, so just let him have it as he flies towards you. If you get hit once, that's okay, although if you're feeling unsafe, make sure to use your Essence of the Soul Stream. And then we'll get the Armor of Guile! Sonic Boom! With the power of the Armor of Guile, we'll now have four hit points, so we can take several hits now and survive. Over on the left side of the throne room, we'll be able to find three vials. And this is Byman. For some reason, if you agree to try to get the candle back, Byman says, You are chicken hearted. And then he goes on about how he's taking our powers away. He doesn't actually do that, but you need to say no to this guy. And then he commends us for being super brave. I guess it's like opposite day here or something? Well, it seems that we need to head to a place called the Desert of Destitution, which is conveniently right outside the town. You want to head to the right and then go all the way to the top, then take three steps to the right, and then we're going to make a pattern where we go down, right, down, right, down, right, and that will take us to the crater in the middle. You want to make those moves exactly. You may hit a random encounter like we did here, but if you make any other moves, you'll get blown off course. So follow that path perfectly. All the way to the top, three steps to the right, down right, down right, down right, and you'll make it to the desert pit. This area is large, but it doesn't take very long to get through because we mostly just have to drop down to the bottom. Carefully work your way to the left, avoiding the spikes, and we'll be able to grab onto the wall here. Drop down again, grab these vials, and then carefully drop over to the right and then back to the left. You'll be running out of wing power when you get over to that heart, so make sure to grab onto the wall. You'll need to recharge your wings before you head back over here. Now we're going to drop down again, and this water is safe. So drop into the water, Take out the bone snapper fish, don't touch the spikes at the bottom, and just continue to work your way over to the right. Down here you'll be able to pick up some vials, but that is optional, and you may want to avoid it if you're in a hurry. Head up here, you'll find some more vials up in this little alcove, and then drop under to get even more vials as you head across to the right. This fern plant with a skull for a head will spit projectiles at you and takes two hits to kill. Watch for it to shoot, get close to it, and hit it twice. Down here you can grab some vials if you want to do a slightly dangerous stunt, and then head over here to the left. From the edge of the screen you can take out another one of those ferns, and then a flying plant monster will come towards you. You need to try to keep this thing far away, but it's relentless. Turn and shoot it when you have an opportunity, but make sure to keep some space between you and the monster. Eventually it'll go down. 
We'll use our blockbuster to cut through the wall here. You'll need to cut three bricks down to be able to get all the way across. Over at the top, you'll find a heart if you cleared enough bricks. And then drop down here right above the spikes so that you can clear one more row and that will give you enough space to get over to the left. From here, we just need to drop down, grab on with your wings as you head over here to the right. Watch out for the ghosts that pop up. There's one up here at the top and there is another one if you go down at the bottom. So watch out down there as well. And then it's going to be time for the boss. Don't forget about the essence of the soul stream, which you can use now to refill your health. If you need to fight this guy and you don't have health to spare, the safest way is to stay towards the top and attack him from far away as he chases you. Eventually he'll come all the way up to the top and you can drop below the boss and he'll try to chase you across to the other side. So just keep following this pattern and make sure that the boss has committed to coming your way before you go underneath him. So we'll wait over here for him to pop up to the top and then we'll fly back over to the left, shoot at the boss a bit more. Watch out for the projectiles that it shoots. They're very slow moving, but they can mess you up, so keep that in mind as you're fighting the boss. Once this boss dies, your health doesn't matter anymore, so if you take a damage as the boss is dying, like we did here, that's okay. Of course, if you have health to spare, this boss can be fought in a much easier way. Go into this position and just start shooting the boss as he hops up onto the platform. Turn back to the left and continue to shoot him as he passes through Firebrand, and when he pops up again you should be able to finish him off. It's really that simple. For completing the desert pit, We'll get the candle of darkness that we were looking for, but that's not all. In addition, we'll get the power of claw. Yeah, I'll get you, Gadget. The power of claw is a new weapon that we can select from the pause menu, and it's more powerful than our blockbuster, but it doesn't bust blocks. However, it does have another purpose. You can shoot it against a spiky wall, and it will create a platform that you can land on. So this will be very useful moving forward. So now that we have the Candle of Darkness, how do we get to Majorita? Well, we need to go back to Byman's throne room, and whenever we talk to him this time, he'll tell us that there's a secret passage here in the throne room that will take us to Majorita's cave. Where is that secret passage? That's right over here. Just walk up through the wall, and in the upper corner, we'll be able to get some extra lives. So don't forget to check up here for two talismans of the cyclone. After you collect those talismans, that's a dead end, so just head back down here, and we'll wrap around to the left side, where we can grab a couple extra vials, before exiting through the top. So grab four vials down here, and then we'll exit into the desert, and unfortunately it doesn't take us directly to Majorita's cave, so there are some random encounters here, but we're a lot more powerful now. Look at how good the power of claw is against these Venus flytraps. It just clears them super fast. We got two vials for that, and we'll head down where we'll talk to this ghoul that can't let us meet Majorita because he's joined Breaker's team. Well, it's too bad for this guy because we are way powerful now. We can just sit on top of the spikes here so that we only take one damage at a time, and we'll quickly take out these large enemies. That guy was definitely on the wrong side, and as we head down here, we see that this area is decorated with some skulls, which is just kind of nice decorations here in the ghoul realm. We hit a random encounter, but those are getting a bit easier now that we're getting more powerful. And we just want to make our way to this cave. So head over here, and that will take us into the Cave of Darkness, 
our next action zone. We've certainly seen these ghouls that have the shields before, but there's lots of them in here. For the most part, we just want to avoid those guys, and we're going to make our way to the bottom. This is not a very difficult action sequence, so just carefully avoid the spikes, and you can see how the power of claw works. It makes a little platform when you spit at them. And just fly over here, watch out for these flame enemies, let that eyeball drop, and then we'll be able to head through the exit over here on the right. This woman with the horns growing out of her head is in fact Majorita, the monster we've been looking for. She steps out of the way and tells us we should light a candle at the altar, but before we do that, we'll check over here to get three vials. This is that altar, and if you choose the use command here, you'll light the candle of darkness, which makes the room turn black. Now Majorita appears again, and this time she'll give us more information about the Red Blaze. As you might have suspected, the great fire that defeated the Destroyer's army in the past wasn't a literal fire, but more of a metaphorical one. See, the Red Blaze is a gargoyle, just like Firebrand. And it seems that there's only one gargoyle left from the same bloodline. Would you believe that it's Firebrand? Yep. And now that he knows the secret, and is the one that can save the Ghoul Realm, I guess these guys want to kill us? That makes total sense. Well, we're very powerful now, so just get behind these guys, hit them with your power of claw, and they will go down quite quickly. Now that that fool is out of the way, we can talk to Majorita once more, and she confirms that yes, Firebrand is the Red Blaze. Then she turns around and says that we're super weak, which, yeah, feels pretty bad. I thought we were getting quite powerful. She suggests that if we want to be able to defeat Brieger, we'll need the help of someone named Rushifel, and if you were playing the Japanese version, Rushifel is, well, he's Satan. So we'll need help from the Prince of Darkness himself to be able to defeat the bad guys this time. I guess that's good. So we'll head across the fire bridge, and look at our wing power now. We have a full bar. It can still be drained down to nothing, as you'll see, but we can now fly very far distances. Unlike many of the other bridge areas, there's a bunch of enemies on this one, but it shouldn't matter too much. If you need it, you do have the essence of the soul stream, so don't be afraid to use that if you take a hit or two. Once you get to this area, carefully fly underneath that overhang and make your way to the exit. We are very deep into the game now, and this is the final town. In here, there's not much to see, just the last few ghouls to talk to, the last place to get our password, and the last place to purchase extra lives. Extra lives cost 32 vials each, which is a bit pricey, but if you have fewer than 9 in reserve, you should spend any money that you have on those Talismans of the Cyclone. You'll be happy that you have them in the challenging areas ahead. In the lower left corner of town, we can get the Resurrection spell, and this ghoul is very confident that we are the Red Blaze and we'll be able to defeat this Breaker guy. Well, I'm glad that you think so. Up here, we'll be able to purchase those Talismans of the Cyclone. We already have the maximum that are allowed, but if you need them, this is where to get them. For now, we'll just tell him no and leave, and you may have noticed that there's another guy in the upper right corner, and this is a very common RPG trick. We need to walk around the outskirts of town and head up here if we want to talk to him. It's our friend that gave us the Armor of Guile, and he wants to remind us about that. He has a very useful clue for us. In the next area, there are a lot of false caves, and the one that we actually need is the fifth one from the top. 
and it's kind of difficult to see which one is the fifth one from the top if you're not looking at a map. But if you are looking at the map, it's marked with a star. The rest of the paths just connect back to each other and won't advance you to Rushifel's palace, so you want to avoid them. They all also look the same, so you're not missing anything by avoiding those paths. This is the one that you need. Naga's path is short, but there are a lot of flying plant monsters in here, and if you follow this path, you'll be able to take them out easily. Head over to this wall, tag it to make this plant come over, and quickly take it out. Another one will come up from the bottom. Try to take it out and you may want to take a damage from the spikes so that you can avoid taking two damage from the plant. You'll be able to grab a heart to recover below. Drop all the way down here and grab this vial. That will make this plant monster come out. And if you do get hit while fighting that plant monster, you could use the essence of the soul stream, but that's the last one. Once you clear that guy, there won't be any more plant monsters to fight, and the only damage you'll be able to take is from the spikes. So right now we have two hit points left. If we take a damage from the spikes, we'll be down to one, and that's when we would want to use the essence of the soul stream. If there are still plant monsters alive, you would want to use the essence of the soul stream just to be safe because they can deal two damage at a time. In any case, you're trying to climb up to this exit on the right, and that will take us to Rushifel's palace. Inside, we finally meet Rushifel, and he thinks that he is the Red Blaze. And looking at him, well, it's kind of giving me some doubts about Firebrand's validity. That guy is definitely red and very blazing. We'll need to defeat Rushifel to prove our red blaziness, but before we can, he backs off and disappears. It seems that this was a trap devised it by Satan, and in typical ghosts and goblins fashion, we'll have to go through a little funhouse before we can fight the boss. Watch your wing power here at the beginning. It may seem like we have a lot, but it'll run out quickly as we cross these large fields of spikes. Down here, these hopping frogs are easier to hit if you get closer to the spikes and hover. Once you're done, grab the right wall, and this drill enemy is extremely dangerous. The safest way to deal with that guy is to hover towards the middle, drop in and hit the spike on the right, then drop all the way down through. That way you should be invincible all the way to the bottom and you'll only take one damage. You'll take significantly more if you try to avoid those drills and get hit. Hover over these fire enemies at the bottom and use the power of claw so that you can grab onto the right side. Then jump back to the left. Wait for the power of claw to disappear, then fly towards the fern enemy and quickly dispatch it with two shots. Stay close to the right side so you can avoid the drill there, and go all the way to the top if you'd like to find a heart. The heart is over here, and if you don't advance the screen too far to the right, you can take out that large enemy before it has a chance to move towards you. If you needed the heart, you'll be able to grab that one, carefully make your way over the spikes, and to advance farther in this level, we need to fly through this narrow corridor, Grab the wall on the left, and you may want to take damage here to avoid that drill. The drill deals two damage, and the spikes only deal one. Hold right and walk up this hill, and you should be able to avoid all of the falling bricks. Then drop down here and fly over the plant with the skull on it. There's another hidden heart at the top. There's another skull fern down here at the bottom, so take it out and then we're going to switch over to Blockbuster, which we'll need to use to get through the bricks on the right side. Try to take out as many as you can from far away, and remember that you cannot cling to the side of Blockbuster bricks. And here's the boss, Rushifel. Leave on your Blockbuster for this fight. 
When Rougifell raises both arms and the screen flashes, he'll release this flower-shaped projectile which will chase you. You can try to escape it by running around the screen, but the best way to deal with it is to climb to the upper tier of blocks whenever he's creating the projectile and quickly jump up to make it disappear. Anytime you see him going for this attack, try to do this so that you don't have to deal with that projectile. To damage Rushifel, you need to wait until he drops one of his arms, and then you can cling to the side of the block adjacent his head and shoot him with the blockbuster. So just like this. Watch out for those diamond-shaped projectiles that he also can throw at you. They will only move in one direction, so they're easier to avoid. Just keep looking for an opening, hit him whenever you can, and watch out for those flower projectiles, and if you keep doing that, eventually you'll be able to beat this guy. Don't forget that you have the essence of the soul stream as well. You just don't want to deal with that homing projectile, and you need to be patient and wait for him to drop the arms. Sometimes it takes a minute before he'll drop them. There's another good opportunity, and that's it. We've defeated Rushifel, who's the most difficult boss in the game. Now, there's an easier strategy that's a bit more aggressive. If you have full health, try this. Fly to this platform to start the battle, hit the spikes in the top, and try to land right in the middle of Rushifel's face. Blast him with the Blockbuster as quickly as you can, and if you take damage, make sure to use the Essence of the Soul Stream, because as Rushifel is dying, you can take damage and lose. Rushifel confirms that we are the Red Blaze, and then he says that we need the Eternal Candle to get our full power. The good news is, Rushifel has it, and he's honored to give it to us. With the power of the Eternal Candle, we now have reached our full strength. This will give us infinite flight power, five bars of health, and the maximum jumping ability. But in addition to all of that, we also get our final weapon, the Dark Fire. The Dark Fire is a powerful projectile that we'll be able to choose from the start menu. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any additional properties like the Blockbuster or the Power of Claw, so we will need to switch back to those weapons occasionally. Before we can face Breger, we'll need to cross this final bridge. So make your way across. You'll notice that now with our infinite wing power, you can fly as much as you want. So don't worry about clinging to the wall. Just fly around freely and use your dark fire to take out these difficult enemies. We're also going to be very happy to have 5 bars of health considering that many of the enemies deal 2 damage moving forward, so we'll be able to absorb 2 shots before we need to use the essence of the soul stream, and then we'll be able to survive 2 more. So yeah, 5 bars of health is quite good. Continue to work your way to the right. The final bridge is not terribly long, so if you take a little bit of damage you should be okay. And that brings us to Breger's Palace. There are no random monster encounters here. Breger's Palace is a very large zone, and there are no checkpoints here. So don't forget to use your Essence of the Soul Stream if you take too much damage. You do not want to take chances here. With our enhanced abilities, this area isn't that difficult, but it is long, so we need to be careful not to take too much damage. At the very end, there's going to be a bunch of difficult enemies that will try to attack us, so we'll want to conserve our hit points if possible. Climb up through the middle here, take out this insect and fly over to the left, and use your power of claw so that you can make platforms on the spiked walls. We're going to be using our power of claw most of the time here, although we will need to switch back to the blockbuster occasionally. Unfortunately, we won't use the dark fire very much, 
because this area is less about fighting enemies and more about navigating the platforms. Switch over to the blockbuster, take out these blocks, and then bounce back up. Jump over here and we'll need to switch back to the power of claw because we're going to jump straight up and use the power of claw on the left side to create a platform, then again on the right. We'll work our way up between those two pillars, and then we're going to climb up in the middle of these spikes. So jump, take out the enemy, use the power of claw on the wall, and continue over here to the left. Drop down, switch over to the blockbuster, and take out both rows of blocks, but be careful not to touch the lava whenever you jump through. We're getting close to the goal now. Switch over to your power of claw, and if you have two or fewer bars of health left, make sure to use your essence of the soul stream so you don't hit the lava and immediately die. Over here, you'll need to use the blockbuster again, so take out that row, drop down, and take out this one. You want to go through the middle there so you won't possibly get hit by the lava. Jump up here, jump straight up, and use that line in the background so that you know exactly where Firebrand needs to be to get under the spikes. Fly over here, hit this wall on the left, then the one on the right, another one on the right, and we're going to need the power of Claw again over here. So we'll jump up, power of claw on the left and this is the final climb watch out for the spikes here but there's going to be enemies soon so be ready for that head all the way over here to the left jump up and now switch to the dark fire get ready to fight take out this guy and he hit us so that's not great and then we're going to head up this wall and there's another enemy here so try to take out this guy or just get past him and get into the door. And that brings us to the final boss. Brieger is similar to Rushifel, but not as difficult in my opinion. And even better, he was generous enough to give us four extra lives if we check over here on the right. Whenever you talk to Brieger, he offers to give us this realm if we join him, and this is a typical RPG final boss trick. You need to tell this guy no. As much as it would make sense for two evil armies to unite, if you say yes to this guy, he will take away all of your powers and there will be no possible way for you to defeat him. Of course, once you lose a life, you'll be able to talk to him again and this time you can say no so you won't lose all of your powers permanently, but you will have to do this. So don't say yes, tell him that you're not interested in becoming a follower of Brigger, and you will have the opportunity to fight the final boss in the proper way. When you tell him no, he'll seem very disappointed that you didn't fall for his trick, but then he says he'll have the last laugh. Yeah, we'll see Brigger. Make sure you have the Dark Fire selected as the fight begins, and you want to try to position Firebrand directly above his lower hand. As soon as he drops the top hand, you'll be right in front of his head, and you can get close up where you can quickly annihilate this guy. Just mash the attack button until he dies. And that's it! We've done it! We've beaten Gargoyle's quest! All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. As Brieger dies in typical dramatic final boss fashion, he makes the screen flash a bunch of times before he finally disappears. And then we're back in the throne room of King Durkoen. The monsters here act like they believed we would succeed the entire time. The king wants to know why we didn't tell him we were the legendary Red Blaze. Well, I mean, because we didn't know. Then, as some sort of gesture of goodwill, the king randomly gives Firebrand the Earth. Thanks, king! And that's it. Brieger was defeated, and his power over Darkoan vanished.
Once Darkoan's strength had returned, he was easily able to defeat the entire army of destroyers. And with that, the Ghoul Realm was safe again. And as for Firebrand, as you might expect, Firebrand became quite known throughout the Ghoul Realm, a legend in his own time. And so ends the story of Gargoyle's Quest, but it does continue in Gargoyle's Quest 2. Before the final curtain closes, the game will show us all of the bosses that we fought, as many games from this time period do. Gargoyle's Quest does a great job of delivering on the action RPG hybrid that Zelda 2 had attempted several years before. Although similar in concept, this game feels very different from Zelda 2, which is more focused on sword fighting and exploring large dungeons, while this game is more focused on the flight mechanics and bite-sized dungeons that are more appropriate for the Game Boy. Although it's not terribly long, you really feel the progression of Firebrand as you play through the game. He is certainly weak when you start out, and feels very powerful in the final moments. The most challenging part of this game is getting started and defeating the first few bosses. Once you get to the middle of the game, it gets a good bit easier, especially with those random encounters. The later games don't have the random encounters, so that is something that they took out for the later entries. It's unfortunate that we never got another Gargoyles Quest game after Demon's Crest, and I would love to see Capcom come back to this series and create a new retro-style Gargoyles Quest for modern platforms. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Gargoyles Quest and put an end to Brieger's evil plan to destroy the entire ghoul realm. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more worlds filled with hideous monsters that need saved from total annihilation. So that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.